All right, as you saw there, it may be surprise some of you, but at number two, we have issue 225, the anniversary issue. Yeah, it's a surprise, isn't it? But uh, I have to say that it probably was one of the better anniversary issues. I, I will give it that. I will give Archie Comics credit for making it the first gatefold cover for any, of, for any Archie comic issue or comic ever, from what I understand. And it's, I mean, you, you have seen in my other videos that I like the gatefold cover. I like, I like the imagery on it to the point that I framed it. <laughs> uh, but I thought the story was okay. I mean, I thought it was um, a good way to, if you like Genesis, a good way to kind of lead us into it, even though it didn't make sense, if you will. It's like, okay, you know, you have Sally get killed off panel, off screen, and yet you restore her in Genesis. And, and then only to, like I said, like I mentioned previously, uh, with 2.30, just to have her get not only restored later on and saved in the original timeline, but then have her roboticized, it just didn't make sense. But besides the ending on 2.25, um, I have to say overall it was okay. I thought it was a, a fun issue to read. It was, it was interesting. It was intriguing. Um, you know, it made you guess exactly if Sally... I mean, I will give Ian, I will give Ian Flynn credit. Even though Sally was killed off panel and all that, it made, it made you guess exactly how she was killed or if she had survived or what happened. So, uh, to me, I really enjoyed 225. I will say that. Like I said, it was, a, it was a good issue. Not the best, not the greatest, but it was good. It was decent. Uh, like I said, it, it showed how everybody, even as enemies, had to come together to stop this from happening. Or stop the death egg as best they can. Um, and, and to me, I think, just, just the fact you have Eggman wanting to use a chaos, basically using this new death egg to reverse time thanks to a chaos emerald that he has just so he can reverse time and then rework it into his imagery I thought I thought it was okay. I thought that was a good interesting kind of like nod towards the Sonic CD Sonic 3 Sonic and Knuckles deal uh, with the death egg you know going back in time and trying to make things in his image I thought that was a good nod there um, uh, you know and I, I like the fact that you know, at the beginning of the issue, you have Sonic kind of looking and having all these flashbacks in his head of, of all the times he, of all the times that he and Sally, he and Bunny and whoever else, he and Rotor, had to go around the world and world and stop Dark Egg Legion members or chapters from doing whatever they were doing with these refueling stations, not knowing what they were for. You know, I like how he's kind of like finally pieces it together, like, oh shit. These refueling stations for were for the fucking death egg, who was which was right in our fuck like was like, which was right in front of us the whole time. We just didn't know it. So, <laughs> um, but and I and I will say this: leading into 225, the build from like even doing the last issues of the Iron Dominion arc was really good. So, uh, but again, like I said, it was decent. Not one of the best anniversary issues, but it was decent. And I do give them credit for making it the first gatefold cover ever used in any of the comics. Like I said, the only thing that complexed me and kind of didn't make sense to a lot of fans was the ending with Sally being shot off screen only to be saved later on, five issues later, five issues later, but only in five issues later, not only to be saved, but then end up being roboticized, so I don't know. Uh, but overall, I thought it was okay. I know some may agree and some may not, but hey, that's the way things go, and that's why number 20... That's why 225 is number two uh, on this countdown. All right, as you see up there, yes, number one is the most unlikely issue. Some may. I know some will watch this video and bash the heck out of it because they don't like it. Some may not. But number one to me is 222. That's right, 222. And the reason I say 222 is the number one issue of the year is, yes, as I mentioned before, 
um, uh, in this countdown, I think it is in part one, because this is a two-part video, that, you know, I am a Sonic and Sally supporter. You know, I, I, like the, I like the romance between the two, I like the chemistry. Um, even though, like I said, I'm the kind of person that's like, okay, you know, if you have to separate them, separate them, let them go their own ways for a while, and whatever, let them date other people, that's fine. Um, but, you know, to me, I thought this was a, a very good issue. I thought it was very well done. It kind of really showed uh, what Sonic and the others kind of do on their off days when they're not having to deal with going on missions and stopping dead DL. Uh, chapters or stopping Eggman or stopping invading forces and I, I like the fact that they build up to this I like the fact that it was a a near year built it was nearly a year built to this because uh, you gotta remember 212 yeah. or 211 212 was initially where this all kind of started around that time the end of I think 211 I think it was 211 or 212 this is initially where it all began the seeds were planted, if you will, for this reuniting, and you always saw the, the you know, kind of like the interaction between the two, and I, I, I like that. So, you know, it was just a fun issue. It was really a great break from the norm. Just very relaxing, very calm. Um, I can't really say enough about it. I mean, to me, this is exactly the kind of story Ian Flynn is capable of doing because, or has the potential of doing. Now, I'm not saying he has to go and do this, this kind of story <laughs> with every issue. No, I'm just saying this is the kind of story everybody will enjoy because it's relaxing, it's a break from the norm. It's kind of the, it's basically the calm before the storm. And, and I like that. And I, and I will give Ian Flynn credit for building, building it up a little bit, you know, kind of getting us ready for that moment. You know, I will give him credit, and, and I will admit it probably didn't just start with two at the end of two eleven, two twelve. I will admit it, it probably started a lot sooner than that, um, like in the one sixties and the one seventies and all that. I will give him credit there, and even two hundred. They had a scene in there where Sally just lounged, kind of flung herself at Sonic, telling him to be careful before he faced Eggman. So, to me, it was a real good. Uh, build up to that time, and like I said, the interaction between uh, Sonic and Sally was re was really well done. I mean, I like the fact that at the end of the issue, they kind of talk about everything they've gone through, and I like how Sally points out the fact to Sonic, like, oh, well, if you weren't jealous, then you probably wouldn't have minded if I stayed with Monkey Kong. And, you know, basically I love how they finally admit to each other that, yes, when they see each other with other people, like, you know, Sally seeing Sonic with Mina, or Sonic seeing Sally with Monkey Kong that yes, you know, they do there's a bit of jealousy that, you know, they have that they that in their hearts and in their minds they basically think, No, that's you know, like with Sally she's thinking, you know, she, you know, minor shouldn't be with Sonic, I should be with Sonic. Or with Sonic it's like Monkey Kong shouldn't be with Sally, I should be with Sally. I mean, I love how that interaction came out perfectly well done. Uh, I will admit one of the nitpicking things that a lot of people will look at, especially if you're a fan of the games or you're just a fan in general and you're a fan of the character, uh, is Amy Rose. Uh, a lot of people kind of nitpicked at the fact that she was defending um, Sally, Sally and Sonic, and she basically came. And I love, and I love how Ian did this because it's understandable. It makes her look, and I, and I, because I just watched before I started doing this countdown, I just watched Melting Man's. Uh, rant that he did uh, today. I, I I just love the fact that she comes out and says, "Look, if Sonic being with Sally makes Sonic happy, then I'm happy for him." You know, I love that. I love how she just you know is mature enough to admit, "Look, if Sonic's happy being with Sally, then I'm happy for him." And I love how she also mentions that yes, she does still believe in her heart that Sonic and her will be together. Uh, when and where that will happen, no one really knows. But um, if it ever happens, whether it's in the comics or the games or whatever. <laughs> but I, I love that. And, you know, th again, you know, that along with how it was kind of like a break from the norm, it was really, really a great issue and probably the best is issue of 2011, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I will admit they did kind of integrate a little bit of the, of, the con of the continuing story arc of, you know, with Nicole being 
you know, with the people, with the citizens kind of being against Nicole and or being divided about Nicole, some being against her, some being for her. I mean, they did add that in there, and that's where Amy came into play. Like, hey, leave these two alone. You know, they're trying to have a peaceful evening. So, again, I love the issue, and I thought, again, I, again, I love the issue, and I just love the interaction. Just a perfect, well, near perfect issue all around. Just a great break from the norm, and definitely a good issue to have as a calm before the storm. So that's why, to me, 230, 222, I should say, 222 was definitely the issue of the year, in my opinion. So overall, that's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this countdown. I know it may get some criticizing, easing by people, but hey, that's the way that's the ball the way the ball rolls. So. <laughs> um, Hope you all have a good day, and comment down below if you like, and I'll talk to you all later.